Diffraction is one of the most important principles to understand in wave motion. It's the basis for understanding how AM and FM radio waves can reach you even though there's a mountain between the transmitting station and you. That's a process uh, of diffraction. Diffraction is also the reason why you can hear someone behind, um, if there's an obstacle between you and an open door, but you can't see them directly, why you can hear them. The, the principle is called diffraction. And it is defined as the bending of a wave around an obstacle or the edges of an opening. So if you think about sound being generated here and going through this doorway, you can definitely hear the sound if you're directly in front of the doorway. But you can also hear the sound, though not as loud, um, off to the side. So it's this bending of these waves that is, um, that is important here. With diffraction, you get this bending of the waves uh, through that obstacle. Without diffraction, you could only hear that sound uh, if you were directly in front of that doorway. So it's the bending. If you want to think of one word the diffraction is, it's bending. All right, let's state the diffraction equation for a long slit and for a circular opening. So by long slit, I just mean I have a wall here and a wall here and a long slit opening. Um, so I, I take my chainsaw and cut this wall, cut this wall, and then take that, that bit of wall out. That's a long slit. Um, a circular opening is just um, a big flat wall and I take my, my bandsaw and cut a circular hole in it and take that hole out. And then we're trying to think about how, how sound propagates through that hole. And the answer is that um, there is a diffraction angle, and this is the key to, to understanding diffraction, is this angle. What does it really mean? So here's either a, a slit of width d or a circular opening of diameter d. Think of it either way. Think of it as a slit for now if you want. This angle theta is the angle between the center line, this line right directly in line with the opening, and the first diffraction minimum. That's just the word that physicists use for it. It's nothing more or less than that first line where we get destructive interference. So we get that the different parts of this are oscillating, and, and you almost have to think about this as two sources, one, two, but it's really not that, it's a, it's a complete uh, continuum of an opening, but if you think about it as two sources, those two sources are going to have constructive interference along the center line, and then they'll have destructive interference along this first diffraction minimum. Here's also um, destructive interference over here, and this angle theta measures the angle between the center line and this first diffraction minimum. Alternatively, you can measure theta from the center line over to this other uh, diffraction minimum. So the actual total angle between here and here is two theta. And the sound, um, I think you can imagine, is loudest along the center line. Most of the sound, and this requires a fairly detailed calculation, which is above the scope of um, of the class. It's an um, upper level or undergraduate or a graduate level calculation of physics. But most of the sound is confined within the diffraction angle theta to either side of the center. So angle theta 
on this positive side, angle theta on the negative side, but within that two theta uh, of, um, of angle, most of the sound will be confined inside of that. So, when do we get diffraction? When is it, uh, when is that pretty much confined to the center line and when does it, uh, when is there a lot of bending of the sound? And the answer depends on the value of lambda over d. So let's take a look at this equation for the long slit of width d. This is the equation for that diffraction angle theta. Sine theta is lambda over d. And what that says is that if lambda over d is large, then that diffraction angle will also be large because sine theta increases with theta. So if lambda over d is large, theta is large, and um, we'll get more diffraction. And what's diffraction? Bending, exactly right. All right, so alternatively, the smaller the value of lambda over d, the less diffraction you get. So as you can see, the ratio of the wavelength of the sound or the light or any kind of wave to the size of the opening, either the, the diameter of a circular opening or the width of a long slit, the ratio of that wavelength to the diameter is what's the key. If the wavelength is large, compared with the opening size, then you get lots of diffraction. Lots of bending. So if we go back to this slide, we get lots of diffraction. We get this case if the wavelength is large compared with D. And we get very little diffraction if the wavelength is small compared with D. So, this is pretty cool because that says that all I have to know, it, it doesn't matter what the wavelength is, it matters what the wavelength is compared to D. And you say, well, what if lambda is about the same as D? I said that's, that's about the, the crossover between getting um, very little diffraction and getting a significant amount of diffraction. The larger that lambda is compared with D, the more diffraction you get. So that's the reason why you can hear, if you have uh, spe your speakers blasting away in one room and then you're two rooms away and uh, there are open doors or whatever so the sound can get around but you don't have a direct line shot between your speakers and you. That's why you can hear those, those deep low sounds, the bass sounds, bass drum uh, or a timpani and a symphony. Uh, that's why you can hear those a lot better because the wavelength of those low sounds is very large. The frequency is small because the, the low sounds have a low frequency, they have a large wavelength, and those large wavelengths bend around the, the, the bends a lot better. Um, well, there it is. Low frequency sounds meaning large Low frequency means large wavelength. Why? V equals F lambda. If V is a constant and the frequency is low, that means a low sound, then the wavelength has to be high. So these mean large wavelength. 
So what I want you to I encourage you to think about is, is when the piccolo is playing, you're thinking about high pitches, high frequencies, and very short wavelengths on the order of centimeters. Whereas when the bass drum is hitting, it's a low pitch, a low frequency, and a very long wavelength, which can be about the size of a room. Okay, let's take a look uh, at a, a real honest-to-goodness example. Um, one thing I should say about this, these equations are not quite identical. They both have a sine theta. They both have a lambda over d. But this one for a circular opening has a 1.22. And that's a result of a detailed calculation. Um, OK, so the 1.22 lambda over d. This is a 1,500 hertz sound and an 8,500 hertz sound emerging from a loudspeaker of diameter 0.3 meters. So the diameter here is 0.3 meters. That's the size of the, of the diaphragm that moves back and forth. And you say, well, hang on. That's not a circular opening in a wall. And I say, close enough. It's where the sound is coming from. It's just as good as having a big flat wall and a circular opening and have some, having some sound go through that opening. So, so this is our circular aperture. So we know we're going to need sine theta is 1.22 lambda over d. And we're supposed to find the diffraction angle for each sound. Well, we're given the frequencies here. We're not given the wavelengths, so we're going to need the wavelengths. So V equals F lambda. To find the wavelengths, we're going to define, we're going to divide both sides of this equation by F. So in the case of the 1500 hertz sound, sorry, 1500 hertz sound is still, uh, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Well, that was a 343 meters per second for the speed. And then the frequency of 1500 hertz. And that will give us a wavelength. Oh, let's just do some rough numbers here. 343 goes about three times. That should be about one-fourth or so. Something on that order. You can plug the numbers in. Uh, then for the 8,500 hertz sound, we have 343 meters divided by 8,500 hertz. Well, that's um, twice 243, so that's one half. That's about one over 20 or so. That's these are rough numbers. Okay, so remember that a low frequency sound has a larger wavelength. And sure enough, this wavelength, one fourth of a meter, is larger than one twentieth of a meter for this higher frequency sound. So now, having found the wavelengths, we would now be interested in finding the diffraction angle. We're looking for theta here. Um, but we've got sine theta as, as 1.22 lambda over d. How do we find theta itself? Well, to solve, for th to solve this equation for theta, we're going to have to take the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. So if we take the inverse sine of the sine of theta equals the inverse sine of 1.22 lambda over d. 
then that'll give us what we want. Because whatever the sine does, the inverse sine undoes. And so the inverse sine of the sine of theta gives you theta. OK, so now we have everything we need to solve the problem for each of the two angles. And luckily, we've already got the number, the, um, the results worked out for the, um, let's look first at this wavelength, 15, I'm sorry, the wavelength of one fourth of a meter, and that'll go in here. And then the diameter is 0.3. That'll go in here. So we'll have one fourth of a meter divided by the diameter. And let me ask uh, for this particular one. So wavelength is about a fourth of a meter. We can work out the exact number. And the diameter is 0 0.3 meters. How is uh, the wavelength compared with the diameter? Are they comparable? Is one bigger than the other? Well, 0.3. I mean, one-fourth is about 0.25, so they're actually pretty close to each other. And um, we should get a fairly big diffraction angle, not as big as if it would be if lambda were really a lot bigger than d, but we're gonna, that's kind of on the boundary line between lambda being a lot bigger than d or a lot smaller than d. And in fact, what you get, uh, if you plug the numbers in, is um, 68 degrees. And that's shown here, 68 degrees. So that diffraction angle, so the sound spreads out. Most of the sound is captured within that cone. When you plug in this much smaller wavelength, then that's definitely smaller. This wavelength is definitely smaller than this diameter. Are you going to expect less or more diffraction? Wavelength small compared to the diameter, and you'll expect less diffraction. It's a high-pitched sound. So this is what we have for the um, 1500 hertz sound, and then this cone, the nine, this cone here has an angle of 9.4 degrees. This is what we get for the 8500 hertz sound. So. Bottom line here, these are actually frequencies that, that your musical instruments can produce. So if you've got a piccolo trumpet or a piccolo, it's got a very narrow cone. Um, the trumpet is a really great example because uh, when the trumpet's playing high and you're right in line with the trumpet, you can hear it really well. But if you're off to the side, it's not, it's not nearly as loud. Whereas uh, a bass drum, man, it spreads down around, uh, spreads all over everywhere. And uh, so these higher pitched instruments are much more directional. All right, consider the situation below. You're walking north on a street approaching a small marching band that's traveling west to east. Wonderful. Marching band going this way. Hallelujah, it's a wonderful parade. Uh, the large shaded rectangles represent buildings. So here's some buildings, and here's you. Um, which instrument are you going to hear first? So here's the flutes, uh, here's the snare drums right here, flutes, snare drums, and bass drums. Well, um, you say, well, hang on, the flutes are closest, I'm going to hear them first. And then you go, well, wait a second, I know something about diffraction now. And the flute sound is not very directional, it's high. So that flute sound is not going to diffract very much, it's just going to go straight, mostly straight through. The first thing, in fact, that you're going to hear from that marching band are those, uh, are those bass drums. They're very low frequencies. They're able to bend around the corners a lot, a lot better. Low frequency, long wavelength, a wavelength that's long compared with the size of the opening here, and, um, or at least comparable to the size of the opening. <laughs> 